It's a, it's a baby, but it's a fish. <laughs> well, it's not a baby. No. You know what? I'll lip it for you. How's that? That would be good. <laughs> Bring that little devil over here. Come here, come here, baby. Hey. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Schuylkill River smallmouth fishing in the fall with my good friend Blaine Mingle. I'm Bob Murray, stay tuned, Delaware Valley Outdoors. It's gonna be a good one. Boy, look how fat that fish is. Yeah. God, they're eating up. Valley Outdoors, your best source for fishing information on TV, radio, and the internet. Hi, I'm Bob Murray, and welcome to Delaware Valley Outdoors. You know, fall is a great time to get out on the water. Uh, you don't have as much boat traffic. You got a lot of good conditions because the fish are now going to uh, feed up. I'm lucky enough to be out here with my, my good fishing buddy, Blaine Mengel from the uh, back, uh, Backwoods Angler. And uh, we've been talking about going fall fishing since last year. Yeah. We got, we got a spring show in, but Blaine says, Bob, let's get out on the Schuylkill River and see if we can catch some uh, fish. And I kind of kind of looked at him a little bit and said, what, what the Schuylkill River? But Blaine, tell us a little bit where we are on the Schuylkill River. This isn't the usual picture that would, some would have. I mean, it's gorgeous here. We are, I used the Pottstown, we put it in the Pottstown area and uh, motored up. We're in the uh, Douglasville, uh, several miles below Birdsboro right now. That's where we're fishing. And We've run uh, several miles today. We had. Obviously, we have a jet boat. That's the, yeah. the key to this, this yeah. fish, fishing here, is that you need the jet boat. But uh, it's it's an underused fishery up here, isn't it? It's highly underfished. Yes, highly under. A lot of a lot of summertime use. It gets a lot of summertime anglers, mm -hmm. bank anglers, you know, mm -hmm. uh, canoes, kayaks, rafts, things like that. They do some floats. They'll put it in in Redding or Birdsboro, and then they'll float down, take out down there. Uh -huh. That kind of thing. But. You got your regular jet boaters out here. There might be half a dozen of them that fish it pretty regularly, and then after that, you just don't see that. So boat. you're not fighting a lot of boat traffic. You're not fighting recreational boating here at all. Yeah. You so, know, which is great. So you can a canoe or a kayak. You, you can do real well here. It'd be real good, yeah. Because yeah, we, I mean, the, now water depth water's here. Water's small enough to do that. You yeah. can you can you can hit a lot of this water from a from a canoe. Yeah. It's a it's a real adequate way to fish it. And now. The thing that you say you have to pay attention to is the water flow on here because yeah. it is, it's really what you call skinny water, am I correct? Yeah, it is. It's skinny. We, coming up here, we went through water in the six to eight inch depth. Um, you know, so I, I use the United States Geologic Survey's website and I'll go on there and I know, like I'll use the Pottstown gauge and I know mm -hmm. that when that Pottstown gauge reads a specific depth um, that I'm limited. You know, what's a good depth for people who are, who are watching, maybe have a jet boat and they want to say, hey, you know what, I want to try that up there. What number would you tell them to look for? I would, if you're going to do it for the first time, I wouldn't do anything below two and a half feet on that gauge. Mm -hmm. Guys that know it can do this at just a hair under two if they mm -hmm. really if they really know it. But once you get into that one nine and, and lower, that it really starts getting hairier. Mm -hmm. So like you say three, three, four feet. Gauge wise, you're three, fine. Three feet's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's everything's fishable. Uh, that's a good that's a good depth to do it. Fish wise, small mouths are probably the the big thing here, right? And you do have some large mouths, right? And what mm -hmm. else? Yeah, we get a few large mouth. We get a walleye from time to time. There are some scattered muskies. Um, better muskie fishing downstream by the uh, power plant Limerick. Mm -hmm. um, and you have your pan fish and carp, and we actually even have caught several trout. We had one trout almost 19 inches this year on a crankbait. So it's a clean river. The river's made a, it's, it's come back a long way. Yeah, everybody thinks of the Schuylkill River as being, you know, in the Philadelphia area as, you know, being, it's a city river. Yeah. But really, up here, I mean, the water is crystal clear, and, uh, 
you have a lot of good fishery. Now you love this in the springtime, am I correct? And we're in here in the fall. I love it. I love it when the water's high in the spring, when it gets up in that 52-ish range to 55, and those those fish really start to get active and feed before the spawn. Because this this area has a lot of a lot of good eddy fishing, and smallmouth like eddies when they're looking, they want to get out of that current to, to spawn, or when it's cold to winter, but mm -hmm. specifically to spawn because these are very shallow eddies. It's mm -hmm. a shallow river, mm -hmm. and eddy fishing can be tremendous when you have high water here. Yeah, and I, I, again, it really like you met, positions them in certain spots that you could almost they just stack you, up. You go, and yeah, I mean, you know, you mentioned the wood situation. It's not so much that you're fishing wood; you're fishing the current break that the wood creates. Right or uh, uh, the uh, stream that comes out, it kicks out of a sandbar. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things that you do because basically this is just a flat bed in here, yes. really. It's real, it's pea gravel and when, like I said, when the river gets low, you can, it's easy to run it because you can see where the big rocks are because they stand <laughs> out, I mean. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no surprises. Delaware River. We're on Schuylkill, obviously, Blaine. Mm -hmm. uh, the structure here, there is structure, there isn't structure, am I correct? That's you got to yeah. read it a little differently than most places. Explain what we're really going to looking for when you're when you're fishing this kind of a, a, a body of water. Well, you've got a you've got a real kind of it, it's a flat. I don't want to say featureless bottom, but um, Let's put it this way: a lot of a lot of the rivers in this area are, are real bouldery and ledgy, and this doesn't have that. So they're going to use, for instance, a little indentation or a little trough. You know, that's a foot. It might it might change the river bottom a foot, and that'll hold a bass. Um, a lot of things we look for on the bank. We'll look for like a piece of wood that'll have a a little current break or a seam. And any time that that you have cover or structure in current, you're going to get what's called a current break. Current breaks are, are a real important factor for fish in this river because they don't have that other cover to use. And they'll use those areas. They'll hold on wood inactive, but the, the active bass will come out on that seam and that's how they feed. They feed so, with, they want the current to bring them the food. So if we were doing largemouth fish, we'd be fishing the wood really tight. Yeah, absolutely. But here, the wood is only acting as a current break for us in we're, that sense. We're going after the, the more active fish. I mean, if we were going to fish the wood, we would be targeting the inactive bass, the bass that are holding tight to cover mm -hmm. that aren't moving around a lot. And, you know, that it's... When I, when I have clients on the river, what I do is I try to hit as many spots where I think I can get a number of active bass as possible. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't work out, then we just have to fish for an active fish, which that, that, those are the tough days. Right, you know? yeah, that's the tough days. Another, another important feature here is a creek washout. There's a lot of tiny little runoff creeks and small trout streams. Um, the Monocacy and the Manitoni Creek are in this area, and anywhere where you have a washout from high water, it, it it throws that, that silt, gravel, and rock, and there's a, always a current seam off that. That is really a, that's a productive pattern a lot of times. Because a lot of times with this, the uh, stuff will get washed out of the creeks. Mm -hmm. so and they'll they, hang right they, at the mouth. So they hang right there, plus yep. they got the break from the main part of the river, yep. and they'll just, just hang in there. Yeah, and again, will. we don't have, a, there's not a lot of deep holes here. We're, no. <laughs> we're fishing basically about four feet, of water is gonna be probably deep. A us. lot of three to six foot depths through this section. Shallow running crankbaits are effective here. Spinner baits can be real effective here. That that's a that's kind of a touchy a touchy pattern. Spinner bait usually when you get one on a spinner bait it's a better fish. And now this time of the year late well I tell you November now. We mm -hmm. actually got a nice day. But uh, yeah, we've got a lot of leaves in the water. Throwing that crankbait could be <laughs> yeah, that would be a little, little tunnel. <laughs> It'd be a futile attempt today. But you, uh, yeah, you can go for the spinnerbait bite is what we're, we're doing right now. But also, you know, like you said, a tube would work. Tubes work good. Yeah. When it gets cold, then they go. We've actually caught big fish on on the uh, the hair jigs, um, the Senko magic stick, any kind of Senko copse mm -hmm. bait. 
Uh, that's a good pattern in that real shallow water when tubes just keep getting hung up on, on bottom structure. Mm -hmm. You can float those Senkos right over top of some of this wood. And I'll tell you what else you see a lot here. You see a lot of grass in the summertime. There's a lot of thick grass, not like the eel grass that you see on the Delaware. Uh -huh. This is real thick hydrilla milfoily type uh -huh. of grass. And we'll get largemouth from time to time in those areas. You get it. We had largemouth up over four pounds last year. In this, in in this, this section, area. yeah. And we're actually fishing in the... <laughs> Like a, almost an urban area here. Mm -hmm. we're, we're close to, what was it, Potts, uh, Potts, Pottstown. Pottstown area? Yeah, we're, we're about five miles north of Pottstown right now. Oh, that's a better fish, Blaine. There yeah. you go. One of tube, right? Yep, that's a tube. Uh -huh. That's uh, a good fish. Look yeah. how black she is. Yeah. Come here, sweetheart. Come here, Bubba. <laughs> Tell you what, you don't get many, but the good ones. No, no, no. There's a nice fan. Blaine, just talk just a little bit about that fish. Look at that belly on that. That's you got all, a bait belly, yeah. yeah. That's all bait. It's all bait. If you could actually see the fish, I mean, you could actually see the fish, but you can feel this fish in here. It is just totally packed. Yeah. And uh, Probably shad. You don't have any crayfish or anything coming yeah. out of it. That's probably bait fish. But when you see a, a fish like that, especially in this cold water, they're really aggressive, and boy, that's a, a fat, fat fish. All right, get her back and let's get it. All righty. Go home, baby. Woo! You know, the fall is obviously the, a good time with the, uh, the the water temperature cooling down. The fish are going to get more aggressive. <laughs> but one uh, detractor of fall fishing, the leaves. Yeah. Um, we could have gone with a crankbait today, but you know what would have happened? Every cast would have been... <laughs> Anything leaf. with treble hooks isn't yeah. going to cut it. Uh, like jerk bait, you, could, you would say, boy, this would be a perfect yeah. water temperature for a jerk bait. Yeah. But with all the leaves, so we're down to what, two baits, right, Blaine? We've thrown a tube and a spinner bait, a little bit of Senko fishing as well. That's a one hook bait. Basically, you need to throw something that just has one hook. Yeah, that's the... You know, um, because anything that has trebles is just going to come back with a bunch of leaves on it. Yeah, and even with the, well, the uh, tube is pretty good, but even with the... The spinner bait, you still get the uh, the leaves in, in, in the in the blades yeah, and everything yeah. else. So it really does. And they're right through the water column today. They're yeah. not just on the surface. I mean, they're mixing up. Hopefully, within a week, they'll be out of here because they really came down the last two or three days. Yeah. So it really, I, like I say, like a senko, mm -hmm. that would be uh, that, and kind of that stick type thing with just a single hook. The thing with the leaves too, they also uh, for jet drives, they also clog your your <laughs> intake. So three, four, five times a trip, I'm in there taking those leaves out of there. Yeah, let's just talk a little bit about the, uh, the, the jet drive and how important it is really in the areas that you guide on. Yeah. The uh, Susquehanna, right? It's imperative on the Susquehanna. Here in the Susquehanna, you're running in such shallow, skinny, flat water. Susquehanna is just ledgier than this. This is actually easier to run here because it's, it's more gravelly. Mm -hmm. You know, but those ledges, you can't read those. In Delaware, you've got a, a good a good channel. You know, it's easier to read the channel in the Delaware, but here, here in the, the Susquehanna, you don't have that. Yeah, so it's basically instinct, sort yeah, of. Uh, you got to, one of the ways to learn, <laughs> unfortunately, is to, is, is to hit a few times, so you remember not to go that way. But well, yeah, it, it, it involves reading the water. See, and a lot of the boats that have come out, a lot of people think they get a shallow draft, a shallow running boat, you can just go anywhere. They are not invincible. They will hit. If you don't learn how to read water, you're going to be in trouble out here. Yeah, one of the things, you really have to stay on plane. You really yes. can't. Uh... And that's part of the problem with the leaves. Mm -hmm. The leaves, you know, they get up in that grate, you just feel it coming down off a plane, and, and the motor will start to rev higher. And that can be a problem when you're in eight inches of water. Right, yeah, and that, that's the whole thing, because yeah. with what we're doing today, you need every inch of water. That's right, that's right. <laughs> to, to, to get through it. Yeah. Um, now, now your tubes that you were throwing today, what, it's a, you like that green color for the? Green pumpkin, watermelon, and smoke serve. I, I don't go too crazy on colors. Mm -hmm. um, the green pumpkins, I think, accurately imitate the colors of a lot of crayfish in this area and all the rivers. Now you're going to have crayfish that are going to have purples and blues and oranges, uh -huh. but you can get green pumpkin tubes with different color flake. And green pumpkin is just a good standard universal color. And spinnerbaits? Spinnerbait, I like a white or white chartreuse. Uh, 
You were throwing that black blue today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that caught fish. Had that good fish yeah. on it, yeah. Uh, but again, the, what we're having here, just talk a little bit about it, is that as this bait's going through, those leaves are catching up into here. Mm -hmm. And no matter how, how good you are, you can always catch a leaf with this reel. <laughs> I don't care. That could be. <laughs> <laughs> and it gets on it. Fish come off. Yeah, fish leaves come off. never come off. The leaves never come off. <laughs> but again, what I'm throwing here, and I got a little pearlescent in, in this mm -hmm. uh, Durstein bait. And I, I just, I, for this kind of water conditions, we got clear water. We got, now we found a little bit of a, a dirtier water. Yeah, here. there's a creek throwing some dirt yeah. in. So, but I like that pearlescent for this time of year. You had mentioned that they, they uh, were in the Schuylkill River here uh, near Reading. Uh, mm -hmm that they stocked uh, shad in here, right? Yeah, they stocked, uh, I don't know the exact number, several hundred thousand shad last year, and the, the smallmouth were just going crazy. And so this kind of color, mm -hmm. a little bit of that, that silverish, if you ever seen a shad, you know, you know that they have that. that yeah, that, that silver that, body. That silver body on them. When they dart, that yeah. flash. So That plus the, the vibration from the blades. It's, right. It's a good right. bait here. But again, when you have leaves, you gotta go to a single, single hook bait. Again, a spinner bait or a tube or a super sinker or something like that with a single hook. Yeah. Otherwise, your whole day is going <laughs> to be frustrating. Right. But those, those crankbaits will work here, especially well, like in a spring time, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah crankbaits are good bait. This is a shallow river, so shallow running crankbaits real good. You can run a three-foot crankbait right into the bottom. And I love this bottom. It's just this pea gravel. It's yeah, the a lot whole of pea thing. And so you just dig, dig, yeah. dig, dig, dig. And you it creates it. a lot of bites. You get a lot of bites on crankbaits here. All right, come on. I'm going to get a, another bait on this here. <laughs> I know it. Blaine, we're here at the uh, the tackle box, and um, it, it's kind of a simple tackle box today because the conditions that we had, uh, we could have gone to other baits, and mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk about that in, in a little bit. But we'll talk about the baits that we caught fish on today, and what you got to use under these conditions. It's, they really, it dictated it. It really just dictated yeah. what we had. Now, I'm going to give you a little secret from behind the scenes. Here's something that you do on television shows: oh, never man, throw. Your spinner bait out while the guide is getting ready because you may <laughs> catch a fish when nobody's oh, ready. So you're gonna have to see that. But well, I got to go to that bait, right? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and we're gonna be we're gonna be honest about that. I I threw this out and Blaine says to me, "You didn't throw that darn Durstein thing, did you?" <laughs> and I said, "Uh huh." It was a bait that uh, Jim Schaefer from Durstein Baits has put together for me. And you mentioned it, black and blue. Yeah. It's something not new in the color scheme, but it's new for me to be fishing this bait. Uh, I've done real well this year uh, on lakes, and especially the Delaware River, uh, on largemouth bass. And I mentioned to you before we started, I said, I want to try this bait. And <laughs> lo and behold, lo and behold. We, we catch a big one. It's a really kind of interesting bait. It's got the, uh, the gold willow leaf with the, uh, the silver Colorado, and uh, it's hammered. Mm -hmm. I, that's just my preference. Uh, you can have this the, the plain if you like. But um, it has this blue-black skirt that, that, that I've been using a lot. I'm really impressed. In fact, you said, what? You know, what's mm -hmm. with this? Mm -hmm. Didn't think I'd catch smallmouth <laughs> on it, but we, we, we did catch some fish. So uh, look, look for this bait. It's, it's a pretty good bait. Also, I had a big white twister tail trailer on it, which, which really worked well. And uh, being the professional I am, I only had one of those left today. So, but anyway, it's a great bait, uh, and uh, we'll be talking about that more. Then we went to the, the white spinner bait, uh, uh, again. It's my favorite. Which, which is your favorite. Yeah, favorite. And again, we, we had mentioned that um, there's shad in the river here, mm -hmm. and uh, some of those smallmouth that we had, we had caught, uh, you could just tell their bellies were full, and we mm -hmm. assumed that uh, they're, they're probably full of young shad coming yeah. down the river because they're stocked. Again, the color bling? I like white and white and chartreuse almost exclusively now. You know, if you're fishing at night, you can go with black. Mm -hmm. um, I always like a gold blade mm -hmm. as well. I always seem to do better on a gold blade. And then the Colorado on the tandem is another key. It's a good muddy water bait because you're going to get a lot of thump and vibration from that Colorado blade. But a, a willow blade when the water, the water was real clear out here yeah. today. So that willow blade is an effective blade. Yeah, we, had, we had a pretty high sky. and. Uh, we had a lot of leaves going through there. Yeah, a lot of leaves. That was the thing. 
Usually, you know, if we're in a tournament situation, you know, you, you'd, you'd put another hook on here, but today was mm -hmm. no way that that was going yeah. <laughs> to work. No, you just catch uh, two more leaves. <laughs> um, exactly. Hey, um, time of the year now. This is this is late fall, mm -hmm. as you call it, November. Uh, still called quality fish, uh, but in the spring of the year, what you really say that the Schuylkill River is probably at its peak yeah. in in the spring. Give us a little bit of the, of what you would be throwing. Uh, with a spinner bait there, would you still use the white, or would you go to a chartreuse, or because of the water condition? If the water's really dirty, I want some chartreuse. Mm -hmm. um, that's just going to show up better. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll go with bigger blades. I'll go to a half ounce bait mm -hmm. uh, much of the time. But as the water starts to recede and gets a little clearer, a little lower, then I'll I'll start to go back to that white. Mm -hmm. Maybe a three eighth. I don't go anything less than three eighth, but quarters mm -hmm. would work real good here. Yeah, I just prefer a 3-8. Just to get that feel. Mm -hmm. I like a lot of thump on my bait. Yeah. And fishing these, again, tell our viewers about the springtime. Uh, and we were doing it today, except one of the things that happened to us is the leaves got into those eddies, and yep. we couldn't get into them the way we really <clears throat> want to. In a couple more weeks, they'll be gone, and we can yes. get back in there. But tell, tell, tell our viewers <laughs> just a little bit about the springtime and what you're looking for on the river here and in the, in the eddies and stuff like that, and how you're going to fish it. Um, you want to look for... Uh, well, first of all, anything, if there's any concrete, mm -hmm. concrete is a magnet for them, and it's a magnet for big fish. Big fish, a spinner bait's a big fish bait out on the river. Um, you're gonna, you can get some numbers on it, but if I want big fish out of dirty water, I'm going to hit concrete and the eddies below concrete with a spinner bait mm -hmm. in dirty water. You can't beat it. As the water starts to clear, I'm going to look for areas like wood, creek washouts with, with current seams, mm -hmm. you know, coming off the, the the outer point, you know, that, that's that's jutting out toward the middle of the river. You're always going to have a little point there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to throw that spinner bait into the head of the eddy, but I'm going to expect my bite mm -hmm. as I'm about a third of the way back on the retrieve, right on that current seam. Your bites, when the water's high, are going to come tight. Mm -hmm. They're going to come real tight to the bank or to the whatever's creating the eddy, whatever cover is creating the eddy. Now, I was surprised here. I mean, we're, we're right outside of Pottstown, mm -hmm. and uh, we got a lot of industrial buildings and stuff like that but yet we'll go up river here it, it, look, it's just pristine yeah, up there it's, it's nice unbelievable there. Mm -hmm. and all that wood up there i mean it's just like wow but that like you said that creates those current breaks and that's mm -hmm. where if somebody's out here uh, again they have to look for that because there really isn't major structure like we have in the delaware with the big boulders mm -hmm. and all that it's and, a different type of fisher yeah, for that reason and again it's a like current breaks that those things provide now one thing we, we fished coming down the river today because almost dictated it, but a lot of times, do you like to get behind that eddy and fish back up into it? I really like to do that, especially when um, when the water's really high. Mm -hmm. Number one, because it's a lot easier to hold that way. <laughs> and you're gonna, you know, the yeah. trolling motor batteries can only take so much <laughs> if you're gonna hold out in that current. So what I'll do normally is if I'm drifting past an eddy like that, we'll hit it, but then I'll bring the nose of the boat almost you know, parallel halfway between the current break and the bank. Mm -hmm. And my clients will fish each side, side and one of them will hit the bank side, one of them will hit the break side, and that's how we'll fish it. Okay. And one other bait that I, <laughs> that I like to mention, and this is what you had said about the chartreuse and stuff like that. This is uh, a, a great bait uh, for that kind of springtime mm -hmm. water. I really like this in the spring because, again, you have days where you got that muddied <laughs> up, and then yeah. with this chartreuse and white coming through, is a great and you had mentioned too about that a fat willow leaf that i've been throwing again it, it, it gives a, a good thump yep. especially in some of those conditions that you find in the springtime uh that you'll do all right i'm gonna go to this bait here and this is your uh <laughs> this is your second go-to bait i don't yes. know i think what, what do we have here that's a mismo tube um mismo bait company made that tube it is as far as I know, I haven't come up with a better crawfish imitating bait. I mean, there's a, there's craw tubes out there that look just like crayfish, and, and I have caught more fish on those than I have those craw tubes. I just, I prefer a tube. Um, I like an exposed jig head, and exp a jig head with an exposed hook, it inserts into the tube. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times my clients get a little frustrated with that because they will get hung up a lot more. <laughs> so I will go with a different type of a, a jig head with a little Texas rig style, it's a Mismo insider head, uh -huh. and that will eliminate a lot of your snags. It is a bottom bait, so you expect to get snagged on that bait, I mean there is no getting around that. But that's where crayfish live, they live right. in the rocks and they make little, little you know, darts and jumps and the biggest mistake people make on that tube is they fish it way too fast. You want to fish that thing a foot at a time. I mean, it is a, it is a subtle bait. I did have a trip recently where the guy was twitching it like a fluke. Uh -huh. 
they wouldn't eat it the way they were supposed to eat it, but he had eight fish <laughs> twitching it like a flute back to the boat. So well, try anything with it. But. One of the things that you mentioned about that with the tube is that if everybody has fished a tube or you've never fished a tube, just try it. As it hits the water, it does this, and it, yeah. and it, it goes like that, which Darts you see a crayfish. So when you're <clears> lifting it, it does just do that, where you see the crayfish just moving mm -hmm. along like that. And again, uh, now you fish this on a spinning rod, right? Yes, I fish that on, I don't go anything any lower than eight pound. You just lose too many baits, mm -hmm. you know? So I'll fish it on eight pound, I'll fish it on a, a, a six and a half foot medium action spinning rod. Mm -hmm. and, and they, now we're gonna talk about this bait. I don't, if we've, if you've seen the show that we did with Lane, I guess it was this past spring. March. March. Mm -hmm. um, up on the uh, Delaware River, which we're going back to, right? Mm -hmm. We're up in Belvedere area, and we fish these hair jigs. Talk, talk us uh, through these hair jigs. Now that's a that's a more of a finesse style deal. When the when smallmouth get cold, really cold. I mean, I, I usually get use a gauge if they're if the tube bite is off, I'll go to that. Um, for some reason, they'll ju they prefer that kind of hair pulsating type of thing over silicone. That's mm -hmm. that's what I found out, or rubber mm -hmm. rubber jigs. That that falls much more slowly than, than plastic or rubber. And they they just they really prefer it. And once it's on the bottom, you know, if you fish it the way it's supposed to be fished mm -hmm. and, and delay it between movements of your rod, that hair is gonna pulsate. It almost gives it a lifelike quality. And smallmouth are down there, they're not moving so as it is, but they're sitting down there looking at that bait. And if they see that hair long enough pulsating, it, it eventually is going to drive them crazy, and they're, you're going to get a reaction bite like that. And water temperature with this is kind of amazing. I mean, when you tell me, hey, Bobby, let's go fishing, it's, uh, 38 degrees, mm -hmm. oh, good temperature. Yeah. But tell, tell me about the, the temperatures that you fish this bait in. I've caught them as cold as 35, 35 degrees on that bait, but they'll eat it. They'll eat it right through. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, when I can catch them on, on tubes and, and grubs and senkos and things like that, I'll, mm -hmm. that's what I'll use. But, when they stop eating those, when it gets really cold, you can't beat that bait. That's a great. It really, bait. this is and the color-wise, this is the, the the brown and the black, or which brown, one? black, and olive oh, are, the, okay. are my three favorites. Now, there's the, you know, you, you, I've seen fish caught on the natural kind of grayish colors, whites and combinations, you know. But mm -hmm. that that's those are my three favorites. Well, I tell you what, the, between the spinner baits and the tubes on the Schuylkill River, you have to get out here early in the spring. Give Blaine a call. I'll take you out there. You're going to see some good fish. You're going to catch some nice fish and numbers too, right? Mm, yeah, a lot of numbers. Yeah, a lot you of get numbers. a lot of numbers. All right. And that's the tackle box. Nice fish, Blink. That's a good fish. Oh, good fish. Good, good, fish. good small, small mouth. Good small. All right. <laughs> Blaine, I want to thank you for the day on the river. Schuylkill River smallmouth. Tough day fishing, but we did catch a couple. Yep. This is not indicative of the days you have out here. These are good fish. Look at this, a quality fish. I want to thank you a lot. You're welcome. Go to his website. What's your website now? Uh, www.backwoodsangler.com. See, Blaine, we can go to our website too. We got a link over there. Yeah. And all that. She's hey, a fatty. She is, isn't she? She's a fatty. Hey, I'm Bob Murray, Delaware Valley Outdoors. Go to our website, Delaware Valley Outdoors, to get fishing reports from Blaine and your stories and all the other stuff that we have there. Gorgeous fish. I love fall fishing. Yeah. I'll see you on the water. Ooh, what a darling.